The hustle, competitive nature, and frantic lifestyle encouraged by modern trends force people into a constant state of tension. This lifestyle dictates a personality structure that attempts to do many things at once, impatient, self-centered, time-strapped, battling not only with others but also with oneself. Such a personality structure disrupts not just interpersonal relationships but also the relationship an individual has with oneself. In this video, we'll discuss stress, its causes, and its effects on humans. Stress is merely the body's physiological response to physical and psychological demands. Within life, numerous factors can be sources of stress. Life events such as work, school, changing residences, starting university, finishing school, promotions, the loss of a loved one, illness, natural disasters, accidents, and traumatic events can all be sources of stress. Relational difficulties, intense work conditions, having children, getting married, divorce, and financial difficulties can also be life events that create stress. However, stress may not always stem from environmental factors. Although the term, stress, is relatively new, it's not a new concept in human life. Thousands of years ago, even the cave person experienced stress and physiologically responded to stress similarly to us. Even though they had similar physiological responses, the evolved human life is significantly different from that of the cave person. In the cave era, Encountering the threat of being hunted by a lion caused stress in humans, but after overcoming it, they would retreat to their cave and enjoy a good sleep. In contrast, in modern life, after quickly satisfying our hunger with a cup of tea and a pastry in the morning, getting the kids to school, and enduring long hours of traffic, we experience numerous stressful moments throughout the day at work, in national news, and in our relationships with loved ones. The effects of stress on us are similar to those on the cave person, but the difference is that we live life faster and don't allocate time for ourselves to recover after all those stressful moments. This is where the problem for modern humans begins. The problem isn't actually getting stressed but not being able to leave stress behind. Almost everything seems to stress us in some way, creating an issue. Imagine driving in traffic, your mind oscillates between important tasks planned for tomorrow, things to do when you get home, and what the radio announcer is saying, all separate stressors for you. Modern human stressors are too numerous. This situation leads to today's agitated, quick to anger, easily ill, aggressive, and naturally unhappy individual. Stress cannot simply be defined as a state of discomfort or fatigue. Doing so would mean underestimating this formidable enemy of humanity. When stress is unmanaged, it's like a serial killer, the main trigger for many disorders. Today, studies exist to demonstrate the effects of stress. A study conducted by Robert Sapolsky at Stanford University aimed to demonstrate the effects of stress on metabolism and yielded interesting results. Baboon species, the closest to humans, were observed in their natural habitats for the study, scientifically grounded by blood analyses. The initial observation was that low-weight baboons had higher levels of LDL, low-density lipoprotein, harmful cholesterol, and lower levels of HDL, high-density lipoprotein, cholesterol known for protecting against atherosclerosis, compared to higher-weight baboons. In other words, weaker members in the tribe are under constant stress from beatings, posing a greater risk. They are at risk of a heart attack at any moment, and this fear weakens their immune system, leading to slower wound healing, 
thereby making them closer to death due to either a heart attack or infection. Conversely, stronger members have normal blood levels because they don't face the same issues as the weaker ones. In the second phase of the study, they take the tribe's leader and drop them off in another tribe. After a while, a blood analysis is conducted and it's observed that our strong monkey's metabolism has been disrupted. Being a leader and having to display strength in the new tribe is a must. This stress leads to an increase in LDL, a decrease in HDL, and a weakened immune system. In the need to prove one's strength, if they face more beatings than they deliver, they'll be defeated. Panic ensues, and this could be the beginning of the end for them. Meanwhile, this new addition, the brawny baboon, is also disrupting the tribe leader's system. Feeling the threat of losing their position, they're intensively experiencing stress, potentially causing them to fall into a secondary position. As the leaders continue their feud, even the most neutral members of the group experience disruptions in their blood analyses. The chaos in the environment leaves the weak members unable to decide whose side to take. Before this battle concludes, they cannot find peace, they remain on edge. The source of the next blow is uncertain, when elephants fight, the grass suffers. Another observed point is that regardless of the environment and power dynamics, some baboons consistently display negative behaviors. This is because their nature is such. They're always tense, with unnecessary fears, and their blood values are very poor. In a long queue or in congested traffic, while some people daydream and find time to drift away, others might become infuriated and figuratively self-destruct due to stress. Different responses to the same effect. The reasons for stress can be categorized under the following main headings. 1. Weakness fragility. 2. Any kind of change. 3. Chaos, high-risk environment. 4. Genetic traits, general thought patterns. Due to these reasons, people experience stress, which directly and negatively impacts their metabolism. They become candidates for cardiovascular and infectious diseases. Even in the smallest operation, their wounds heal very slowly or not at all, and they face all sorts of complications and medication side effects. Can we say stress is always bad? Certainly not. Because stress has some fascinating positive aspects on humans. This is called positive stress. It enhances performance, gives energy, and motivates. It makes us more effective and efficient by increasing our performance. It accelerates the learning process and helps individuals acquire new skills. Generally, while stress has negative effects on the human body in long-term situations, its positive effects are often observed in short-term situations. Our body signals an alarm under stress. Under this alarm, the body releases epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, to adapt to a sudden situation. Adrenaline secreted in the core region by the inner parts of the adrenal glands causes the expansion of vessels, which are organs of the circulatory system in the human body. This ensures the blood supply of vital organs in the face of sudden situations. For example, a person can run faster than usual when escaping from a dog or can concentrate more during an important exam than in a regular situation. The enlargement of a person's pupils in the dark when the electricity is cut off at midnight, and as a result, the clarity and field of vision increase, can also be cited as an example. The explanation for consciously riding toys that would cause an adult to scream in amusement park-like entertainment places should also be sought in the positive effects of stress on humans. 
Adapting quickly to the environment in the face of these sudden or unexpected situations also arouses positive feelings. The human brain, always ready to react to the environment and able to give automatic ready responses in routine situations, wants to give the response as quickly as possible when faced with an extraordinary situation. Stress serves as a shield against unusual situations created by sudden excitement, joy, fear, and the like. Under stress, a person can surpass the limits of their potential thanks to the triggering power of adrenaline. Under stress, a person's respiration, heart rate, and pulse increase. Therefore, blood flow also accelerates. Since the focus of attention widens, the pain felt by the person decreases as the focus of attention becomes unbalanced. Dr. Abraham Tversky, who is also a rabbi, gives the example of a lobster. As you know, a lobster is a soft creature living in a hard shell. The lobster grows over time, but its shell does not. A lobster gets stuck in a narrow space, and stress starts at this stage. It uses stress positively and tries to get out of this situation it is in. To protect itself from predator fish, it takes refuge under a rock and abandons its shell there. Then it produces a new shell that it can live comfortably in. Eventually, as the lobster grows inside its comfortable shell, it begins to feel uncomfortable again and has to go through the same process. The triggering mechanism that allows the lobster to grow is nothing but its feeling of discomfort. In other words, stress. If lobsters had a doctor, they would never grow. Because as soon as the lobster feels uncomfortable, it would go to the doctor, the doctor would give it medication, and the lobster would feel good. It would never take off its shell. So, we need to realize that stressful times are also a sign of growth. If we use difficulties correctly, difficulties can make us grow. In summary, a stress-free life is not possible. As humans evolve and develop, stress always follows us. Our main concern should be managing stress and benefiting from it. Understanding how we position stress in our lives and how we can make life more livable revolves around understanding ourselves. We need to strive for what we can change and not get stuck on what we cannot. If we don't do this, stress wins, and we deteriorate day by day like weak baboons. What we should do is accept the situation as it is, like a lobster, and find a solution to the problem. Otherwise, our narrow shell will be our demise.